Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the Power of NetSuite. This is Annette Manius with Oasis Solutions Group, and we appreciate you joining us today. Our speakers today will be myself and Nancy Sutton, Senior Cloud Consultant on the Oasis team. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you want to ask questions, please put that into the question box on the right-hand side. And we are recording this presentation, and we'll send it out to you as soon as we finished with the presentation. So what's in store today? We're going to talk first about who, what, and why Oasis in our partnership approach. Talk about a little bit about NetSuite and then why we chose NetSuite as our partner in the cloud. And then follow up with Nancy with the NetSuite demonstration. And at the end, we'll have some Q&A. At Oasis, we feel that people and processes are more important than software. And how we partner together will ensure your success. We have been in business since 1991, 28 years, May 1st. And are um, currently on the Fast 50 Awards, uh, Best Places to Work, and then were awarded the People's Choice Awards for the General uh, Greater Louisville, Inc. Incredible Awards. And we also are on these prestigious Bob Scott's Top 100 VARs in our industry. We have over 700 clients in 35 states. Typically, we work regionally. We like to be face-to-face uh, -face with our customers. But what's interesting about the 35 states is that we have some customers who have been here, worked with us, and then moved to other states uh, for, other, for jobs and taken us with them. So to me, that's a testament of, of that relationship with those customers. So again, who you buy from in the marketplace today is more important than what you buy. Obviously, what you buy matters because you, it has to be a fit for you. But we've also seen situations where customers have bought software and then not been able to choose the right partner to implement that. So that's where we come into play. On our team, we have mostly CPAs, MBAs, former CFOs, uh, controllers, software developers. And why that matters to you is that we understand business. We understand how business works and the processes, not just the software. I think that brings huge value to our customers. And our projects man managers have over 350 years of combined experience. Now I want to talk a little bit about Oracle and NetSuite. NetSuite it was the first cloud company developed in 1998. So if I think about that, why that's interesting to me is that if you think about 1998, what was the internet then? And it was almost non-existent. And also the word cloud didn't mean software, it meant white clouds in the sky. So it's a little interesting to me that back then they, they took that chance and were the first cloud company, a totally, uh, totally cloud company. There are, uh, NetSuite has 7,000 employees globally with 40,000 plus organizations and, and subsidiaries globally. They added 3,000 new customers in the last 12 months. And they were acquired, NetSuite was acquired by Oracle in 2016 for $9.3 billion. So apparently Oracle saw a big value there in NetSuite. Uh, so they've grown by 30% year over year in each of the last four consecutive, 14 consecutive quarters. On the left-hand side of the screen, you will see some logos from larger companies that NetSuite uh, works with. NetSuite uh, scales very easily. So we have some smaller customers and we have some larger customers as well. And so does NetSuite. So it is a very, very scalable product. On the left side of this screen are some logos from some of our NetSuite customers that you may recognize. They range from service companies to manufacturers to distributors. So a little bit about cloud software, and uh, it, it is said that cloud software is the last ERP upgrade you'll ever have. Automatic updates are pushed twice a year, 
And when I talk to people about that, they, they look at me like, how could that be? And the way that works is it's pushed out and then you determine if you want to add that on. You will eventually have to add that on that cloud software. Everyone's on the same version, but you can try things out in a sandbox. So if you have any customizations and things like that, we help you uh, try those out in a sandbox first. So you're not um, just all of a sudden you wake up one morning, go in, and it's different. Um, so we help you through that process. Uh, cloud software is 24-7 device and browser agnostic. So meaning you can get that on your iPhone, on your Android, uh, any iPad, anywhere you are, you can get the information. It's very scalable and flexible. And there's built-in security and legislation compliance also. So talking about security, one of the other questions that people ask me often is, how secure is it and is it going to be up? What's my uptime? So this screenshot shows you an actual shot from a customer that is was up 99.99% .99 actual performance in 2019. So you uh, would get the same screen on your instance as well. And you'll notice down at the bottom, there are different certifications, meaning that it is secure, that there you're not going to get hacked uh, with the system. So when I talk to people about this, I always ask them, you know, do you bank uh, on the Internet? Do you, do you go still into a bank? You know, that's secure on the Internet, so you feel comfortable with that. You have Netflix, all kinds of, of ways that we work on the Internet now. Amazon is another really good example of that. So uh, all these systems, especially a system like NetSuite, is going to be secure. They're going to secure your data. Um, and then we are NetSuite solution providers. 42% of NetSuite's revenue come from people like us, solution provider partners. And we deliver the last mile functionality, meaning that we help our customers implement the software, do training, uh, support afterwards, and a lot of different projects and things like that. So we are experts in analyzing requirements, proposing solutions, and then executing the implementation. Uh, but we also have behind, standing behind us, are the full resources of NetSuite and the other partner community, which is, is big. So if I think about why we chose NetSuite as our partner in the cloud, about um, seven years ago, we uh, started really seeing a, a, an influx of, of uh, information about the cloud, and we thought, okay, we need to, to analyze some products. So we looked at NetSuite, Intact, and Acumatica. Um, at that time, Intact was not uh, owned by Sage, but those are the products that we looked at, and we determined that NetSuite had the most product depth. So it has the most um, features and function for our customers and the customers that, that we typically deal with. Uh, so that's why we chose NetSuite. Uh, has has uh, been in the market longer. That was a big criteria for us as well, is that the other two products had not been on the market long enough, whereas NetSuite really was the leader in that market. And it, it really is the most user-friendly, as you will see uh, in the demo. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Nancy Sutton, and she will do our demo. At the end, if you uh, have questions, again, just put it in the chat box, and we will answer those questions at the end. Uh, for the software demonstration, I plan on stepping through NetSuite's PowerPoints, um, so to speak, that were just highlighted in the slide deck, no pun intended. Um, first off, I'm going to briefly discuss uh, address security and audit trails. I'm going to um, try to highlight the efficiency of the role structure by exploring a couple of the role-specific dashboards, as well as uh, diving into a few of the functional dashboards that are available within each role. Um, we're going to try and make sure you get a sense of the single-source, real-time, um, fully integrated application by showing you a new inbound lead from a website, converting that lead to a sale, and uh, actually even sending off a personal email from the CEO um, welcoming that new customer on board. So trying to do kind of a day in the life as we step through the role process. 
through the process, the um, workflow of NetSuite will guide us through the entire process. And hopefully you're gonna get a chance to see how the intuitive interface will um, help validate how quick user adoption is. Finally, we're gonna explore the flexibility of reports and the ease of distribution throughout the organization um, and the network. So I'm currently, I'm, I'm right at my, as, as you can see, I'm right on the um, page for NetSuite and it, that's about as easy as it is to log in. You can log in from your uh, laptop, tablet, or phone. So I'll just click log in. Then it is gonna prompt me for my email address. So I'll click that in, type in my password, and log in. NetSuite uses strong encryption and robust password policies. There's also supplemental security that is available such as application only access and ability to restrict access by an IP address. So you can literally limit which users can access the software and from what IP addresses. Single sign, excuse me, single sign on is available as well as token based security. Once you log in, you're logged into your default role. So I'm currently logged in, as you can see in the upper right hand corner, as the administrator. My customizable dashboard contains portlets, which are customizable, as I said. There is a shortcuts that are typically used by a system administrator, including user management, customization, and utilities. You'll also notice my reminders portlet on the left, which is customized by me to the specific alerts that I want NetSuite to bring to my attention. For instance, possible duplicate records that may require review or system alerts that are coming from NetSuite. I've also set on my dashboard portlets for quick access to some of the audit logs. So for instance, the NetSuite login audit, so I can see, I can quickly drill into success or failure, see people how they're logging in, as well as a system notes audit. I'm gonna click at the top on the administrators in control and drill into a customized center. We can take a brief look. I know um, for myself, moving from a batch-based system, such as, you know, from a batch-based system into a um, live system, that that sense of um, security was, was important and the audit trail of what was available. There are extensive audit trails that are available within NetSuite. Um, I will the save search. There's system notes, audit log, a scripting log, deleted, we talk about a deleted record audit log, that's only for those customer, for those users that have access to delete a record, and it's not deleting a record without any trail to it. Um, and that would typically be a record that is being deleted that had no activity along with it. System notes, et cetera. And these can be set up as graphical, like these workflow, the, with a web browser stat, and who's logging in and how they're logging in. So this just shows just a wide type of uh, audit trails that are available. There's a lot of differences between roles and we kind of focused a lot on that during this demo. I'm gonna switch over here on the right to my sales, to a sales role. And we'll look at Mike Daniel. Looks like he might be a U of L fan. Users can set their color scheme under their set preferences. This is, uh, comes in pretty handy when you hold multiple roles on your system. Frequently, our users might be a, both a controller and an administrator on the system. So by switching roles, they can quickly see by color what, what role they're in. And it also helps you if you're trying to switch between a production and a sandbox environment. Um, in the stage, in um, stage terminology, that would be a, um, typically you'll have a copy of your company data and that would, that, that's what that sandbox would be similar to. So you could do testing. There are several portlets that have been placed on my sales rep dashboard. You'll notice my reminders are different than what the administrator's reminders are. And there, those, these reminders are um, much more in tune with my, with my responsibilities as a sales rep or Mike's responsibilities. He can use any of these reminders to drill in directly to the activities he needs to complete. So again, it's a full one system. So both the CRM is in the system as well as your customers and your transactions, your sales orders and your inventory. So here I can see I have four calls I need to complete. If I click into that, I will see the actual calls. From this list, I can quickly drill over to the company 
if I want, or I can just drill directly into the activity that I need to complete and record my activity. I'll go ahead and click that. There are several other portlets on my dashboard that I wanted to bring attention to. I have the key performance indicators. This has been designed for me as a sales rep to highlight where I'm at with my new leads, new opportunities, and new open quotes. Also within here, I can click on the leaks, click into the links on any of the details. So I have new opportunities this month. I can click on that and it will show me that list of opportunities, which is helpful. And I'll go back. I even can click on the graphics. So there's a graph available for me as well. And I can quickly change my X axis to be able to see a daily view instead. And if I wanted to see what these numbers actually are, I can hover. I'm able to export the information to be able to include in an email to my boss, as well as export out to a, to a CSV file. And I'll slide this down and I'll close it out. Dashboards are fully customizable. I can adjust the layout. I can move, I can move portlets around, so moving them up and down to be able to see what's important to me. And I also, I also can add or remove portlets from my dashboard. So let's go ahead and add a portlet. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on Personalize. And the available that the types of available uh, portlets display on screen. I have standard content, report snapshots that I can add, trend graphs, as well as customize apps. And I can click on quickly on currently used to see what's currently on my dashboard. So we're going to go back to standard content. And I'm going to add the calendar. It's as easy as clicking the button, and it's on my screen. I'll go ahead and close out the personalization. From here, I can see what's going on and what I have to complete for today. And if I want to make a different adjustments, I can go ahead and um, personalize even that on my screen. If you look at the top of the screen, we have a menu structure. The menu that you can use, we have classic style menus, something very similar to what you would see in Sage, but we also have what we refer to as, as um, centers or custom center menus. These menus have been adjusted for the um, specific role that I'm logged into, and each center can have its own dashboard. So here's, for example, is the dashboard of opportunities. As I um, within one of the things I wanted to make certain that we um, that make certain I show you as I look on the app here's the app, different dashes that are on my opportunities. All of these portlets are specific to opportunities. But one of the things that I found great about um, NetSuite is how easy users adapt to it and how quickly they adopt it. And one of the reasons I believe that is, is as one of my clients, one of, as one of my clients said, you can get there from here. It's extremely intuitive interface. So as a new sales rep, if I wanted to know, add an opportunity and I wasn't quite certain how, there's several ways to get there. I can go through the menu system and go to opportunities, transactions, and click on new. Or I could click on my quick add and go to the opportunity, and from here, it will create an opportunity fairly quickly. I could have opportunities on my shortcuts. If I wanted to add an opportunity for a specific customer, I can look quickly at my recent records. Bob's Burgers is one of my customers. It's actually a lead. And from here, the Create New button exists also, and from here, I can go quickly down to create an opportunity. If none of that, I can't remember any of that. The worst case, I can even type in opportunity. And from here, I can click on the page to create opportunity. So you can see that it's pretty intuitive to figure out and to move your way around the software. Let's go ahead and follow what I promised, and that is to follow that inbound lead. So within NetSuite, you're able to create quick custom forms, customer forms, that you could set up on your website. These forms require no HTML or coding. 
This is one that I created that allows us to capture lead information. So Sandy Squirrelson from Spacesuit has requested some information. She goes ahead and click Submit. And we'll return back to being Michael, and we're sitting at our, we'll go return to our home dashboard. I'm gonna minimize my calendar so I can see my reminders. And if I quickly refresh my reminders, I'll see that I now have two web leads. A moment ago, there was only one. As I click in to these web leads, you'll see there's Sandy Squirrelson that just came in. So I need to follow up with her. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit to pull up the leads. Give Sandy a call. She says she's interested in purchasing some monitors from us. So I'm gonna first confirm that this address is indeed where she wants us to ship it. She says it is. So I'll set that as the default address. I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. So that change is instantaneous. And if I wanted, I could actually log the call from there as well. I'm gonna go back to viewing. To log the phone call, I would click quickly on communication and I could log the phone call. And this was a uh, follow-up on a web lead. And she's planning to call back later today to confirm the quote. Excellent. I'll go ahead and hit save. That quote is on the system. So if I happen to be out to lunch, someone else is going to be able to see the message for the call. The next thing I want to make sure I do is go ahead and get that quote in the system for her. I'm on the lead. I'll click quote. And from here, I'm going to simply select the location that we're going to ship from. Put a quick title on my quote. This is our monitor quote. I could change I'm, I could change the expected code state, but she did say she was going to call back today, so I'm not going to make a change there. And down at the bottom of my screen, I can start keying in the items. I know she's interested in a Dell monitor, so I could start typing Dell, and all of those monitors that begin with Dell will pop up for me. If I wanted to, I know that she wants more than one. I can even click on the Add Multiple, and because Dell was listed, it lists just our two Dell monitors. If I had nothing listed in that box, it would allow us to, let me cancel off of here real quick, show you what that looks like. So here's the case where we can add any of our other items on. So I know she wants this Dell monitor. Great, because we have 20 in-house. She wants, a, and we have 11 of the curved monitors. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in two of those and two of those, click done. And NetSuite will add both of those items at the base price. If she had special pricing, that would come in as well. At this point, I can save an email. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save and print so that you could see our customizable form could then be adjusted and print and sent it off. Sent it is the new word. Here we go, so the quote is in. So later on in the day, if she calls back and she's ready to go, I can slide over to my recent records. Here's the quote that she had put in. I can click sales order and now it's gonna convert that quote to an order. At this point in time, I can make any changes to it. I can record her purchase order, make changes to the line information, if how she wants to ship, and I can click save. Again, I can save in print or save in email. So now my order's in and it's currently pending fulfillment. So I as a sales rep can't ship it. However, the warehouse personnel can. So now we'll see how that workflow works. I'll slide over and I'll log in or I'll, excuse me, change my role to the warehouse operations. And if I look on their reminders, we can see it has two orders to fill. When I click on those orders to fill, I can see the spacesuits order, as well as a prior order that's on the system. I can click both. I can select all and submit so that those are all getting fulfilled. Or in this case, 
I'm just going to do one at a time so we can see the fulfillment screen. In fulfillment, you're going to notice that the status is defaulting to picked. Inside NetSuite, we can configure your software to see stages of item fulfillment. So you can have a picked, a packed, as well as a ship stage. We're going to skip the picked and go directly to packed. On the shipping screen, I'm going to note that this is a residential address that we're shipping to. And I'm going to save and print the label. At this point, it's going to print off my UPS label for me because we're completely integrated. And if we look on the shipping information and carrier information, it is, it's fully integrated. So we'll also have on our packages, apologize. We will have our tracking information will get written back to NetSuite. The next step in the process is my end of the day routine. This is what happens at the end of the day. UPS shows up, the truck shows up, and we want to ship everything out the door. So I refreshed my screen. We can see that orders to ship changed from five to six. I'll click into here. Typically, what would we do? We would say, yep, these are all of the orders that went out on the truck and we could click Submit. For purposes of our demonstration, I'm just going to click into the spacesuit sorter. And at this point, I can mark it as shipped, and it's now ready for invoicing. Our invoicing is done by our AR Analyst role. So we'll quickly change over to our AR Analyst. In her reminders, she can see that she has 11 sales orders to invoice. She can click on the invoices. Screens look very similar to what we saw in item fulfillment. So training and user adapt, excuse me, user adoption is quick because once you learn how to do one piece, the next piece is pretty straightforward. And we'll click in. Here's our invoice, our order. I'm going to go ahead and click bill that we're ready to bill this invoice. It's going to create the invoice. If there was something that accounting needed to add to it at the invoice stage, they could do so. They can click Save, as well as Save and Print, or Save an Email. And that Save and Print and Save an Email, you could set defaults at the customer, so um, and you can follow the defaults as you go through the process, and that can all be automated. So we'll return to her page. And instantly, by the way, Sandy Space Suits is on the scene. So we'll go to Air Aging, and if I do a Find, can't remember the name of the company. I think it was Spacesuits. Could be wrong. There it is. That's photo space. But that gets what you see. Is let's try Sandy. Nope. So we'll stick with this. If I here it is. There's Spacesuits. So if I slide down here, here's my customer Spacesuits. Their current balance, and I can drill into that current balance. And from here, I can drill all the way into the invoice. I can back through. And if you can still, just similar to Sage, you can do your um, adjust your aging to go backwards in time. You also have aging options. So if for some reason on your aging report, you wanted to see four bands instead of three, you can quickly change that here. And you can even make them irregular bands. So the reporting flexibility, the reporting is extremely flexible. You'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a number of buttons. We're going to take a look at some of these when we're looking at an income statement. But from here, you can see that you can export out this report to Excel, to a PDF, to a CSV file or a Word document. I can quickly print it. I can email it. And here's my favorite. I can set it up for a schedule. So I can have our AR Aging Summary be scheduled to be emailed out weekly every Tuesday. And on my recipients, well, I could send the recipient out to be a um, sales rep. It could be a group of sales rep. I can also select any other folks that are on our system. So customers, employees, we can define groups on our systems, vendors. Uh, sales reps, et cetera. And once I hit schedule, this will be sent out, and it's going to begin being sent out every Tuesday. 
I'll go ahead and cancel out. So that's the scheduling. So scheduling is available for any of our reports. From here, let's go ahead, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard. Let's switch over to um, the CEO role. So most of you know Annette, and I know our CEO is pretty much hands-on, and it's, it's nice to have that personal touch, and that's what our CEO wants to do. Looks on, on his dashboard, he sees on the bottom right that his new customer sale, that the new customers is expanding. We sold 8,000 this month just to new customers alone. Really interested in who those new customers are, and he'd like to reach out to them. Quick and easy, go to sales, sales and marketing overview, and under his key performance indicators, he'll see he has new customers. I'm gonna refresh it just to make sure it's current. And now I can drill into who my 12 new customers are. And there's Sandy, there's the spacesuit. I can drill into the customer. And then from that customer, I can send off a quick email welcoming, welcoming them on board. Slide down to communications messages. I'll send an email. That's my recipient, Sandy. I'll select on message. I have a pre-defined template that's going to pull in Sandy's name, thank them for their business, and it's as easy as merge and send. If I look at the bottom of my screen, I can see that Sandy has already, in day one, has received three emails from us. When she did the initial Larry had an automated email sent when the lead was first registered on the website. The second one came, came out from Phil because the order was fulfilled. So she was notified that it was sent. And then later on this morning, Mike, because that's how I logged in, it sent the email. This, I, I, I did these in the wrong order, my apologies. Larry was, the, Larry was the CEO welcoming them. But you can see that three emails, have they've already received three emails from us. And these can be set up specifically to how you want to do it. So we'll go back to our dashboard. I'm gonna take a look at two more um, quick dashboard views. So let's look at the board metrics. So if you're the CEO, information that you're probably very interested in are key performance indicators for income, cash flow, receivables, payables, and sales. Being able to see this in one dashboard is extremely helpful. You can design dashboards for covenant information, financials, as well as look at KPI meters to graphically see how things are going. So I'm gonna switch over to the CFO. And just to take a closer look at some of the statements and some of the reporting flexibility, I'm gonna drill into the income statement. So here's our standard income statement. This, is, this income statement was um, completely out of the box. I can quickly, here, I can, as you saw before, we can email it. If I wanted to see a summarized income statement, it's as easy as collapsing my drill down, and then I can expand it to the levels that I want to see. I also can change this one income statement from a total income statement across the entire company to looking at it by class. So I just change my column to class and click refresh, and now I can see our sales by class across. So you can see that this could be by product line, it could be department, it could be um, by market channel. There's a number of ways that we can do this. This is dimensional accounting at its best. I could look at sales by location and click refresh. If I wanted to see a different date range, I can do that as well, quickly and easily. The other piece that I can do is I can graph this information. So if I click graph, I quickly have a graph of our sales. We can export to Excel, to PDF, and as you saw before, we can email and print. So what I wanted to do is kind of review what we've shown. We started off by just briefly addressing security and the audit trails. 
We um, hoped that we demonstrated the value of that single source, real time, fully integrated application as we followed through that inbound lead from our website. We converted it to a sale. We had even had a personal email sent off from our CEO. The, we highlighted the efficiency of role structures by exploring a couple of the roles that you saw with the role specific dashboards as well as the reminders, stepping them through the process. Through the process, the inherent workflow of NetSuite guided the process, and hopefully you saw the intuitive interface that helped validate how quick user adoption is. And lastly, we explored just the reports and how flexible they are and easy they are to uh, distribute out to the staff. 